Hi, it's Jo from Jo's Country Junction and welcome to my sewing room. Um, I'm sewing today. It's been so long since I did a Sew with Joe episode. I thought I better get one filmed. It's been, oh, I don't know, quite a while. Part of the reason is, is that I've had a deadline project. Um, part of the reason was I was finishing up a quilt that I'd already kind of talked to you about. I was finishing up my son-in-law Craig's quilt and I'd already talked to you about crumb piecing. So I didn't um, do shoot video during that. And now I've been working on a spider web string quilt, which I've already shared information about that in previous video. And you can find that um, on my channel, Joe's Country Junction on YouTube. And so I didn't think that you would probably be interested in me filming yet another video about a spider web string quilt. So I've got those blocks sewn together. Uh, my grandson Anders is going to be here tomorrow and I'm going to be taking care of him and so I will take those blocks and I'll just wait and I'll iron them tomorrow while he's taking a nap and so that means I've got a little extra time to sew. Um, right now it's about five o'clock on a Thursday night in northeast Iowa and we're in my sewing room. It's a good place to be. We're expecting rain over the weekend. I've got a bridal shower to go to. Um, it's it's a busy time of year, especially uh, we have a big extended family, so it really does get to be a busy time of year. The project that I'm working on today is I am making these blocks. They're like a big scrappy flying goose, and um, I think they're going to be a fun. I don't know exactly what I'm doing with them. All I know is is that that's going to be my next project that I'm working on. I have been working on my UFO list. I have quite a few UFOs here. Uh, a lot of people wonder why I have so many UFOs. And part of the reason, the biggest reason is, is that a lot of blog readers send me unfinished projects and I finish them and I just take them on as my UFO and I'm happy to do that most of the time, yeah. And so I keep some, I send some on to other people. Today, this project started out because my daughter, when she was first learning to sew, she had gotten, hmm, I think maybe a jelly roll. And she had gotten a companion angle ruler. And she decided that she was going to make hourglass blocks. And so these are the blocks that she made. Well, not exactly. They're not exactly the blocks she made. When she made them, they were like super wonky and uneven, the seams at the corners didn't come together. Um, they were just in pretty tough shape. And like I said, it was one of her first projects that she'd ever done. And so in that, she was gonna just, she looked at them, you know, years later, because they'd been sitting at her house as a UFO. So years later, she looked at them and she just thought to herself, uh, I, I can't do anything with these. And she was gonna throw them in the garbage. And I said, mm -mm, just wait, I'll take those if you're going to throw them in the garbage. You can keep them if you want to, but I, if you're just going to throw them in the garbage, I'll take them. So I took them to my house and I measured all of the blocks to see how big they were. And after a little bit of deduction, I realized that I was going to probably have to cut off, oh, about an eighth of an inch. Is that what I cut off each side? I'm not sure how much I cut off each side, but I squared them down so that these are four inches. But you can use two and a half inch strips and you can do it the right way. You don't have to do it the wrong way like I'm doing it. But I just didn't want to waste a project. That's a lot of fabric. It's a lot of sewing that's already been done and I didn't want to waste it because I'm kind of goofy that way. So I was trying to think of something to do with the blocks because um, there's, there's like a whole lot of them. Um, like this is one stack. And there's another stack just oh, actually taller right here. And so I think there's enough to easily there's enough to easily make a quilt. So I didn't, you know, I just wanted to make use of what it was and not throw it out because that's, you know, a lot of a lot of dollars in fabric that it would be getting thrown away. And there's something about me I just really enjoy uh I call it making something from nothing. So using somebody else's trash to make something is just so very appealing to me. And I have no idea why. I think it's just because, um, I don't know, I'm kind of a frugal girl and I don't spend a lot of money on fabric and things like that. And I really enjoy just making do with what I have. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm making do with what I have because I have these blocks from Kelly 
And I believe they are made from a fig tree fabric. They, they look that way to me. Um, they're kind of that light, earthy kind of tones. And so I think they're a fig tree fabric. I had a blog reader who happened to send me more um, fig tree fabric. She was to a place where they cut the fabric into jelly rolls. And when they do that, they cut off the very end of the fabric. And so she was, I, I don't think they're, I think they're cutting charm packs. And so they cut off the edge of them. And then people can go around and they can pick up that fabric and they can they can buy that fabric at a super reduced rate. So she gave me a bunch of that fabric and I was super happy to have it. It happened to be fig tree fabric. And she probably gave this to me, oh, I don't know, four or five years ago even. And, but it's just been sitting in my room. And I thought, well, someday I'm going to have a chance to use it. And I actually have had now a chance to use it is because I... The center right here of this block, this is the piece from Kelly, the hourglass from Kelly, and this point and these sides here are the fabric from the blog reader. And so I just think this will be a fun quilt. Um, nothing super fancy, but something that I can sew, keep me busy and occupied and at the sewing machine and still not have a lot of money into a quilt. Because I'll probably gift this one either, it could be a wedding present or graduation quilt or Maybe even a quilt for a fundraiser. We'll see how it turns out and how it looks. And, you know, maybe there's even that bizarre thing. I might even submit it to a magazine. We'll just see what happens with it. So um, if you want to do this, you could easily make a quilt like this. I used, uh, basically, it'll be two and a fourth inch strips. But you can do all of the things that I'm telling you to do, only just make them be two and a half instead and use jelly rolls or strips that you've got cut and you can make a project just like this. So these are already made. I do have a tutorial on how I cut and how I make hourglass blocks. And so I'll try to put a link to that below. I'm kind of bad at that. I'll admit it. I get so excited to have the video done that I don't go back and like do the last complete finishing things. That's something that I'm not very good at. So if I forget to do it, just go to my channel and there'll be a video that says how to make hourglass box. And so then you can just figure out how to do it from there. But I'm going to try to remember to uh, put that down in the link. Um, I was already at the cutting table earlier today. And uh, when my grandson Anders was sleeping, I had to do something quiet to keep myself busy. And uh, it's a good thing and a bad thing about being a grandma and taking care of your grandkids because you're in your house. I only have one of them here. He was up sleeping. I had to be quiet. I'm really glad that I'm in my house so that I can change the wash, change the dishwasher, do that kind of stuff. But also there's still extra time to do stuff. But it has to be quiet. And it has to be something that's not going to provoke the dogs to bark for some reason. So, because I don't want him to wake up. So I ended up cutting out this quilt. And to do that, what I did is I cut the strips that the blog reader gave me. So I cut them down so that they were two and a fourth inches wide. And then I put them right sides together. Like here you can see these that were right sides together. And then I stacked them up. The strips I stacked them up like this. I think I think I did three sets that were right sides together. Put them in a stack, and then I took my ruler and I I flipped my ruler this way and then this way and then this way and then this way when I cut these pieces out. I did it just like you would do, just like I did when I um, did the hourglass block tutorial. So now I'm at the machine and it's time for me to do a little sewing. I'm gonna admit something right here. I'm really, really terrible at counting. I have not counted how many of these there are. I have not counted how many of these I was able to cut out. I just cut these out until I couldn't cut anymore. And that's how many I have. And once those are used up, I'm gonna to have to come up with a different plan for my quilt because I'm out of that kind of fabric. So maybe I'll be making one small hourglass baby quilt with just hourglasses and maybe I'll be making just one big flying geese quilt. I have no idea what I'm gonna make. And at this point, it really doesn't make a difference because I don't have to make a decision until I have the blocks made. 
I'm kind of weird that way. Um, a lot of people, they want to know exactly how much, um, how long it's going to take, how much fabric. And I do it completely the opposite way. My joy is sitting at the machine and actually doing the sewing. My joy isn't all the calculations and the math and all of those little things. There's plenty of time for that later. So anyway, I'm at the machine. I'm going to do some sewing. And you're welcome to sew along with me. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a block like this and I'm going to add, I'm just going to take, I don't know, because I don't know how many pieces I have, I have to do this odd thing because this gets sewn to the top and then I've got to make a piece that goes here and make a piece that goes here. So I need one individual and I need one um, piece together piece on each side of this. So I'm going to just start. I've got a few pieces here to sew some individuals or on the top and I'm just going to do that. I am sewing on a Faf Grand Quilter. Everybody asks me all the time so I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, when you do these blocks it doesn't matter if you put this on this side or this side. It's going to be a scrappy block. And had I to do this all over again, I probably would have mixed up these fabrics that are in these blocks too and not made them matching the, across from each other. But this is what I have and this is what I'm going to use and it'll all be just fine. I am what some people might call an anti-planner because um, I just don't, I just don't plan. I just, whatever it is, it is and that's what we do. Um, I didn't set up a, an ironing station. I probably should have done that so that I could show you exactly how I'm doing a block. Um, I didn't come really prepared. I just wanted to sew and so I just sat down and flipped up the camera and started to sew. That's kind of me. I just, like I said, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants and that's totally true. Uh, this morning, I had zero idea or notion that I would be even filming a video today. I just, whatever falls in my day just falls in my day. And I just go with it. I suppose I should be a little better and tell you when I'm doing these blocks, um, how I'm sewing that top on, I should probably be a little bit more clear. So I have my piece like this. I'm putting this triangle that is also cut from the companion angle ruler. I'm putting that on top of there and then I'm running it through my machine. I'm making sure that each side, um, overlaps just a little bit. Um, so I'm trying to get it about in the middle of the block so you can see that this is some overhang here and some overhang on that side. Nothing, I don't like measure this out, I don't put a pin in it, just eyeball it and it'll be fine. I don't even know how many I'm going to run through here. trying to use different colors on different pieces so that more variety shows up. I think I told you that it's a sunny Thursday in Northeast Iowa, but I don't think I told you that it's April. <laughs> so uh, farmers are gearing up around here to start getting crops in. Um, it's a busy time of year. There's lots of tractors on the road and lots of uh, equipment is moving around. I don't mind this time of year at all. As far as the weather and as far as those activities go. Um, other things about this time of year, eh, I don't like so much, but... For the most part, the weather and the farming and getting ready to garden, those things I really enjoy.
I don't know how long we'll be filming. It probably matters how good the dogs are. I've got three dogs up here right now with me. Uh, right now I have uh, my dog Izzy, who is a Australian Shepherd poodle mix, and she actually just looks like a poodle. And then I have Rosie. She's my beagle. And then my I have I foster dogs um, and do foster care for dogs. And I currently have a healer terrier mix and he is going to be adopted this weekend and he is actually going to go to my son's house and my son is adopting him um if you're a blog reader of mine i'm sure you've heard me mention my son buck and that is where um spot the the healer terrier for us is going. He's been just a super dog. I'm really excited to keep him in the family because he's been a real joy to take care of. And I'm just happy that he's staying in the family. And I'm happy to see my son excited about getting a dog too. So I don't know how many I have here. Let's count. Um, I'm going to bring my... I cut her over. There's 13. It happens to be 20 here. So I have you, if you've not seen one of these, they're awesome. They are a uh, blade saver. There's actually a rotary cutter blade here. One of my old ones is in the inside of this. And then you just put your piece right here, the thread there, and then it breaks it apart. So there's 20 there. That means I need to, to sew at least 40 of these to um, have enough to do those. So we'll just start sewing some through. I don't know how many. I don't think that I'll be able to count and um, talk with you. Here is where I really wish that this was like a two-way thing. Like you could be counting while I'm talking and sewing and you could just yell stop. <laughs> but that's not going to work. <laughs> so I want to have some kind of variety. So I already did some of those. I'll do some of those again, but um, I want to make sure I have a variety. Being I cut these out when they were right sides together. Um, so I had two strips. The two strips were right sides together like this. And so they're already together when I cut them. So when I took my companion angle ruler and cut and then flipped and cut and then flipped and cut and then flipped and cut, being these were right sides together, then they're already matched and they're already a set. So I don't have to take one from this pile and one from this pile and put them together and then run them through the machine. This is a huge time saver. And whenever I can, I do that. I put the two pieces of fabric that are going to eventually go together, right sides together, and cut them out at the same time. And that way they're already, like, packaged together. And I really en enjoy and appreciate um, that trick that I learned to keep them, to cut them right sides together. Once in a while I have to adjust them a little bit, but... You saw me there, I just adjusted it, and it wasn't a big deal to adjust that much at all. And it's a lot easier to just make a tiny adjustment than it is to grab one piece from one side, one piece from the other side, and then put them together. Okay, how am I doing? I'm really thinking I should have plugged an iron in. 
because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to show you how to do the next step to make these blocks without a knife. Um, hmm. I, th I have an ironing board here. I'll pull that one over. And I just got to get this cord plugged in. Oh, it's stuck. Just a second. Okay. I'm going to squat down here quick and I'm going to plug my iron in <laughs> and then I'll be able to keep going with you. Okay. The iron's in and so um, I have a little travel iron that I sometimes keep at my side over here. And so this is my little travel iron. Um, it is a white travel mate. I have no idea or any more information about it than that. Um, a blog reader sent me a box of stuff that she didn't want anymore, and that happened to be in there, and I use the iron quite regularly, usually when I string piece. Um, something like this, I sometimes don't use it, the travel iron then, just because I do like to get up and go to the ironing board some, and a lot of times, like, this is the evening of Thursday, and I had my grandson today. I'm going to take care of my grandson tomorrow. And so a lot of times I just come up here, and I do all of the sewing I can possibly do. And then the next day when he's here and he's napping, and remember I need something quiet to do downstairs, that's when I do all the ironing. It's kind of a weird um, way of sewing, but it's a very good for time management in my situation because I have my grandson that I take care of and watch so much. I'm going to go back to the beginning back here and I'm just going to cut a couple of these so I can show you how I'm going to make the blocks. And I'm just going to iron these to one side. Some people would probably iron this seam open. I'm just not that girl. I'm not picky about my project. Um, if you want your stuff to lay perfectly flat and straight, you're going to probably want to iron them open, but that's just not me. And you don't, you can do it however you want. There's not a right way or a wrong way, or chances are you're not gonna tell my quilts any different than somebody else that would have ironed the seams open. But, you know, some people are very picky that way. Um, I'm just not, like I said, I'm not that girl. Okay, I'm just, so I'm just ironing these to the side. Sorry that you can't see it, but at least, um, you're getting the hang of it. So I just left them together when I ironed them and now I'm just snapping these, just cutting them apart quick. So then I can show you what a block's gonna, the construction of a block looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna iron that up. I'm gonna take another one. I'm trying to find a certain color because I know what colors I have going on in some of these blocks already. I think we'll just do this one. I think we'll do that one. Okay, normally here, I'll cut these little points off before I um, do any more sewing on this piece. So I'm doing that quick. Um, I am so fortunate and blessed because um, I've mentioned to you already that the hourglass blocks were already sewn by my daughter, Kelly. I've mentioned that the um, fabric that I use to make these pieces that I'm sewing now was given to me by a blog reader. And my scissors I'm using was also given to me by a blog reader. And it is a uh, Karen, is it Buckley? Karen Buckley scissors and I really like it. It's awesome scissors and um, I probably need to buy a couple more and put them at my other machines because I really do like them a lot. Okay so we have the piece like this. The next thing we need to do is to add this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to just turn this right sides together like this and then I'm going to sew from here down to here and that will be one side of the triangle block. And I've got a couple going here, so 
I'm going to do the same thing with this one. If you're kind of going, okay, how does this get attached onto here? Um, just hold it and remember you're trying to make a triangle. So when you get to the point that it looks like it made a triangle, then you got it on the right way. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to iron that over. Then we'll add a piece to the other side. So we have this much here and I'm going to add this to this side. This one's piece is kind of tricky because yeah, we'll just get it done. Okay, I'm going to take that one off, trim, I'll iron that one. And after one side gets added on, it looks like this. And then I have this piece that's going to get added on, and that will go on there like this. I don't, I'm not loving the coloring of that, so I'm going to probably sew another one of these, or I'll actually trim one off because I've got one over here. I just don't like the coloring. I don't like the this green with that. I don't know. What is that, a teal? I just don't like them right by side by side. Oh, so what do I do? <laughs> I pick another one that has the teal. Let me see if that... Yep, that would go in the same direction, so we're not going to use that one. Oh, my word. <laughs> Isn't that the way life goes? Okay, I got, I got another one ironed. Yet another one. Okay. That one's going to go on here. Again, you just fold it right side in, and then you line it up and put in your seam. <laughs> Okay, so I'll iron that piece, then I'll show you what my black looks like. I've got the hiccups. What a terrible time to have the hiccups. Okay, so here's, this is how far we are. For me, then I took a ruler and I measured from this tip down to here. And for me, that was six inches. So after I did that, then I cut out some... Um, triangles using my easy angle ruler. So I cut strips that were six inches wide and then I put my easy angle ruler on them and then I cut these pieces. And I will show you wh what I do next. Um, this piece gets matched up and laid on there like this, right sides together. And then I sew that seam. <laughs> ready and sew them both at the same time. I usually like to, um, if I'm doing something like this, I like to do at least two at a time, usually more than that. Okay, so this one's done as well. And I'm gonna, I have another of those triangles. I'll lay on this one and sew that. Just gonna send a couple of these through the machine then I don't have to worry about my Get work on these both at the same time okay so they came out with that I sewed the seam that is crossed here so I'm going to open this and iron that and I'm just ironing it to the white which is the path of least resistance so this, that seam was ironed to the white, and now I have a piece like this. I'm going to grab a couple more of these triangles that I have cut. And I'm going to put a piece on the other side. So now basically all you're doing is making a flying goose block because you're dealing with companion angle and easy angle triangles. Okay, I didn't iron this one yet. Okay, this one's ironed. I'm gonna put this on here. These are gonna be really big blocks and I think they're kind of fun just because they're oversized like they are. Oh 
Okay, that one's done. Run this through the machine. After I get you show, after I show you how I get these blocks done, I'm gonna probably be done ironing, and then I'll just feed everything through the machine and chat with you. That way you'll just see and know what my intention is and I'll, you'll see how I'm making these blocks because I think it's more fun to um, hang out with somebody if you know what they're sewing. <laughs> so, okay, here's the block. So that's the big flying goose block that I have made. And um, this one happens to just have white in the sides and uh, some of the other ones aren't gonna have white in the sides. It's just how this one ended up being. So I'm gonna put that one in the done pile. And here's the next one. And you can see how the colors are coming to together and working. I'm really happy with these. I think they're gonna make a fun quilt. Um, I don't know, we'll just, we'll just see what I end up doing with them, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm just gonna line them up and sew them in a line or, I'm not sure exactly. We'll just go with the flow because that's kind of how I do things is kind of a go with the flow girl. Um, I'm going to um, take some more of these, I think. And sew a few more of these, get them through the machine. And then I'll have something to iron tomorrow when my grandson's here. Lots of people say things to me like, um, oh, aren't you going on the shop hop or aren't you going to do this or that? And I'm not. I'm. I, mm, I don't do very good hanging out with people because I don't know. I just always feel a little inferior. I don't know. I, I know that sounds dumb. I think we all kind of have our own little hangups and things that are in our head that probably aren't exactly true, but I'm not, I don't like a lot of stuff. So I'm not somebody who's going to go to on a shop hop and buy three new projects because goodness knows I've already got way plenty more than three projects here that already need attention. And I like things that are kind of uncommon. Like I love making shirts from quilts. I love using up every little tiny bit of scrap. I love taking somebody else's project and finishing it. I just, I don't fit in good with the uh, shop hop bus tour kind of quilt thing, quilt theme. I don't know. I, I'm happy that other people could do that and I'm happy that other people love to do that. But for me, it's just, I don't know. I'm kind of like awkward I feel awkward and then um, like I said, I just don't like to have a lot of stuff. So, goodness knows I have plenty of stuff, but my room is full and I read a book about um, decluttering your house and keeping your house clean and they said that the room that you're in, you should think about it as a container. So right now, all of my quilting stuff is contained in this room. And if I want more stuff, I would have to have a place in this room to contain it. And there's just not any more room in here. <laughs> so I'm good with what I have. Um, I still take projects if somebody wants to send me a project. I still love getting a project from somebody and working on that. That's totally fine and great. Um, but... I want to get a few things out before I get any more in. So that's why I don't do like shop hops and stuff because I also know myself. I'm that girl that will think, oh, that's so cute. I'm going to buy that. And next thing I knew, I bought a purse pattern and I never make purses or bags. I don't like making purses or bags. I'm just not good at it. I... If I make a purse or bag, I get so picky about the top stitching on the top and did I do it right and does it look nice enough that it's just too stressful for me. So I just don't make purses and bags. But if I'm on a quilt and if I'm at a shop hop or if I'm in a quilt shop and I see something that's cute, for some reason I can just talk myself right out of what I know about myself and next thing I know I'm buying a bag pattern and I should be making a bag and 
and I get home and I go, what in the heck did you buy that for? Because you, you know you don't make bags. And so that's what happens. So that's why I don't go on shop hops or bus tours or anything like that. So hopefully um, that gives you a little explanation about my weird self. So... In fact, I have a bag pattern that I bought the last time I was at a quilt shop that I still haven't made. And I think I bought that, well, maybe it wasn't the last time I was at a quilt shop, but probably one of the most recent times I've been at a quilt shop. And I still haven't made the bag. And chances are, I'll never make the bag. But boy, it was a cute pattern. And it looked really fun to make. It's like a sew as you go. I should probably try it sometime, but I get I just have too much going on in life to, to sit down and, and uh read a pattern. See that's kind of like why I'm sewing this right here now, because it was sitting there, it was available, it was something I could do, it was I could just grab it and go and I didn't have to like read a pattern. I didn't have to count the pieces. I didn't have to do all of that stuff because I don't get a lot of time to sew. Um, so when I do get time to sew, the last thing I want to do be doing is reading instructions. So there's a uh, view of my crazy mind, but I've, um, I'll happily say that a lot of the comments I get uh, on my videos is uh, people that are like me, that they might feel awkward on a bus tour, uh, they like to avoid quilting police, those kind of things. So I think... Uh, like people sometimes unite and so that's why I I'm just up here in my sewing room and I'm not on the on the shop hop but again if you like shop hops go for it <laughs> okay I am I got one that's a little wrinkled here I'm gonna iron it quick much better <laughs> I just feed these through. Um, I'm not really, uh, I don't like stop and iron. I, like I said, I'll iron all of this tomorrow when my grandson's taking a nap. I had actually vaguely thought that this might be one of my next projects. So I've headed out sitting on the I have an island in my sewing room. So my sewing room is like about 16 by 20 with a big closet on the side. And um, 16 this way, or is it 14 this way and 20 this way? Uh, so I wanted to use the space the best I could. And I saw Lori Holt had a great video on how her sewing room is set up. And I decided that I would do something kind of similar to her. Uh, I have a long arm here where she would have, I think she has like a little love seat in the television. I don't actually do any work up here besides the long arm and sewing. If I'm going to be cross-stitching and that kind of stuff, I do that downstairs in my living room. So I didn't need that. So, But I did want the island to use up the most amount of space that I possibly could use up. And... I ended up buying a dresser is on that end of it. And I have two table legs on this end of it. And then I bought a big extra wide countertop from Menards. And the desk acts as the table legs on that end of the island. And then the table legs down here are holding up the other end of the table and then so I can pull my chair up and this becomes a desk and this side if I wanted to somebody else could pull in and so on this side and then I have a cabinet machine over there that's an old uh, vintage singer and I use that machine for 
uh, string piecing mostly. Uh, it's just nice because if I have two, pro if I am string piecing a project, I like it to be on that machine because the mess is kind of hidden. Like right here, that you can see the door right there that goes down the hallway towards the bathroom and the other bedrooms in the house. And so somebody walking down the hallway, if my door is open, can see me sewing here. So I like to have a neater project that's not quite so messy here. But if I want to sew a string quilt, that's why I sew it over there because it's hidden from the table and you can't see the big box of strings and all of that because it's on the other side if somebody's just walking down the hall. <laughs> And then I like to have two machines up if I'm string piecing too because string piecing kind of takes a little bit more time. And so if I have that set up over at that machine, then I can still use this machine to do something like I'm doing right now. I just cleaned up my string quilt project that was over at that machine, but I, I feel another string quilt project. I've just been in such a mood to clean up and use up all the things that I have. And um, I've got a couple different ideas doing in my brain. And those will probably be coming down the pike as YouTube videos. Because I know a lot of people are interested in using up your scraps too. So this one project is great. I would use if I were you and... Uh, I kind of got locked into using two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch strips because my daughter Kelly messed these up and that's the size I had to trim these to. But if you're starting all over with a new project with this and you're using um, your scraps, I would use things from your two and a half inch bucket because the two and a half inch strips would make this go really quick. But I'm just kind of, I use what I can use, so that's why I am doing what I'm doing to use these up. I'm kind of flipping through because I don't want to have all of the same colored pieces used, if that makes sense. Um, because when I cut these out, I cut the width of the fabric strips and then those strips were cut in half. So that being they were cut in half, then I could alternate different colors and put different colors right sides together when I cut. But I don't want, so then in several places in the quilt, the same two pieces are gonna be together. And that's okay because the quilt's gonna be big enough you won't really notice that. But if I, like I said, I don't know how far my strips are gonna go when I don't know how many I have of this or how many of that. So I'm just for now changing it up a little bit. I really um, enjoy this kind of uh, piece. A lot of people. A lot of people would look at a stack like this and say, oh my gosh, I've got to sew all of those. And I look at a stack like that and go, oh my gosh, I get to sew all of those because I'm so excited because I can just sit here and do the same thing without a lot of thinking. Well, it's getting towards supper time and I got to go make my <laughs> I love like this too. Here's my whole big pile of these. They're just everywhere. It makes me happy to see that because I could, I feel like I accomplished something, which is always a good feeling. I'm just, some people think it's crazy that I would start sewing a quilt and I don't even know what it's going to look like in the end, but that's just me. I kind of have, um, I've done it both ways and this has just become my favorite mode because I feel like the pieces or the mood or whatever kind of <laughs> makes the decision on what I'm sewing. I really like um, having
having a table with where I'm so in the area that I'm sewing. I really appreciate having that. I always use it and I set pieces out like this and um, then I can feed them through the machine faster because they're all set out and ready. <laughs> set to do. Most of the time I cut three sets at a time. I think this is really going to be a fun quilt. I have about, oh, I think 15 or so quilts left on my UFO list that I put together in January 1st of last year. And I've done that with uh, Country Threads Chicken Scratch blog. Mary has people, uh, encourages people to put a list of 12 projects on a list. And then you have your 12 projects. And then every month she pulls a number and then you're supposed to do that project. I participate, but I don't usually do um, the project that they suggest. I usually just do whatever project I either A, feel like doing, B, I need to do because I need to do it for a gift or something, or C, like this one. Remember I said that this one is at the top of the list or it was sitting out and it was easy, easily accessible. So that's the project I picked just because it was really easy to do. But I've been trying to do one a month. I've not been doing very well with that, but that's okay. <laughs> There are worse things than not getting UFOs done, but I really do enjoy um, working on them and doing them. But sometimes I just, I just don't, um, like if she would pick number two and it was a Christmas quilt, I might not feel like doing that Christmas quilt because it's July. So I might not pick that. I'm not doing projects from that list. I seem to be pulling up and picking up other projects from other things. I had a blog reader send me her frolic quilt that was a Bonnie Hunter mystery quilt and I've been working on that kind of a little bit on the side. That project that I'll finish that one and I'll use that as a charity project or as a charity quilt and give to a benefit or an auction that's happening to help someone in need. Um, so that one isn't on my UFO list, but it's technically a UFO that I adapted from somebody else that I'm working on. Um, I also, the spider web string quilt, that was not on my list. It was on my list like two years ago. And then I looked everywhere when the number came up and I couldn't find it. And I was so frustrated. I, I just, I could not find it. And then it turns out it was in a box that I thought was full of fabric strips and it was there weren't fabric strips in that box. It was that project and something else. But when I saw it from the outside, I just thought it was strips. I didn't realize it was actually that spider web string quilt. So I'm always working on um, old projects, different projects, projects from shirts. Um, just, I don't really care what I'm sewing as long as I'm just sewing. I guess that's... Um, I don't know, makes me a little different than some people, but that's okay. I, I like being me and I like um, working on the projects I'm working on. Um, I can see on the other side of my island that behind the camera that I've got about three more projects there that need some attention because, you know, I always have lots of projects going on. So that's what I'm sharing with you today. This was how I made the um, flying geese blocks. For me, I based everything, all of these were using my companion angle ruler, which is the one that looks like this. Oh, I think I must have got something dirty on there. Um, and um, I used that and I cut, uh, for, uh, everything was cut from two and a fourth inch strips. And these side blocks were cut from six inch strips. You can adjust all of this so that you do it with a uh, two and a half inch blocks. And in that case, these strips would be two and a half inches and these would be six and a half inches. So 
I hope that's a new way for you to use up your scraps and um, I'll probably be back again sometime and show you how I'm uh, laying this quilt out. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna sew a few more strips and then I'm gonna head down and make some supper because it's getting towards six o'clock and my tummy's starting to rumble. So hope you have a good day um, and thanks for joining me. Bye. Thank you.